What is up, my friends? Welcome back. Today, I'm excited because I have my friend Justin who works for Showplace HQ. Today, we're talking about all things design when it comes to your midterm or your short-term rentals. And I'm excited for this because design could be a huge topic that people just get stuck on. And we're gonna be diving into what avatars you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have certain types of pieces of furniture in and what's important, what's not important. And most importantly, we're gonna be breaking down all those things that you need to have in your home as you are getting ready to list your midterm rental and most importantly the clients that you're going to be working with what they actually are looking for in a property that they're going to be staying or living in for a certain amount of time so please make sure to watch this and like and subscribe and i will let's just jump right into it let's not even mess around anymore we're getting we're getting into this stay here you're gonna love this one what's up everybody welcome back to my youtube channel i am here with a special guest today justin miller who works for showplace hq and is the founder of showplace hq and I'm super excited to have you on, Justin, because I've been a huge fan of your business model for probably, it's probably been four years, maybe even, maybe less, I don't know, we'll have to talk about the time frame because I'm really bad with time frames. But what I really liked about what you guys did is that you really brought products to people and you were showcasing those products early on. And it was something that nobody else was doing in the short-term or mid-term rental space at the time. And over the last four years or however long you guys have been around or since I've been using you guys, you've evolved in so many different ways. So I really want to make sure that not only do we engage in what you guys do, but also I'm going to talk about some of the things that I really enjoy about you guys and why I actually use you guys for my design services, why I use you guys for product placement. Um, so man, Justin, tell us who you are, man. Let it, give us a quick intro on you and then we'll dive into some questions that I have to ask you about. Awesome. Well, Jesse, glad to be here and we're equally a big fan of you as well. Um, so... Just the quick background for me, in 2013, I started a short-term rental management business called Pillow, and in 2018, we were fortunate enough to get acquired by Expedia. And in 2020, we saw all of these investors jumping into midterm rentals and short-term rentals, and I felt that they were doing it so incredibly wrong that I started Showplace to really be that missing ingredient, which is setting up your property rental business for success. That's all we do. 2020. Okay, cool. So yeah, you know what? That's exactly when I, I keep thinking 2020 is like so many years ago because it feels like it has the last four years just feel like it's just flown by. COVID really just kind of jacked everything up in this weird way. Like my time block is just, dude, it's backwards. Oh yeah. I mean, I, the time is fly, and, and we, we've actually gone through a lot of evolution over those four years as well. And what I'm excited about in our partnership is that we try to help as many of your potential mutual students and customers that you guys send to us in the best way possible with technology. Yeah. And I, I love that. And, um, you know, one of the things with the, well, first off, you guys are a sponsor at the midterm rental summit. I can't thank you guys enough. I think that again, this, this summit is for people that are looking to get into the midterm rental space that are understanding it, that want to learn more about it. It's April 21st to the 23rd in San Diego. So if you don't have tickets yet, there's going to be a link down below. Make sure you get them. Justin's going to be up there speaking with host GPO. But one of the things that I, I liked about you guys, and let's, let's talk about the evolution um, of Showplace. But most importantly, I recognize you guys um, because I had a bunch of short-term rentals at that time and midterm rentals. But what you guys would do is give um, like Rockstar energy drinks or I remember getting like kombuchas, like cases of kombucha um, for my property. So you guys were sending placement. What we would do, and I love this, we would get a little, a little QR code and we would put all these drinks or pillows or whatever it is into the property. And it would have a little scan bar so that whatever company that was, and it seemed like, it seemed like little small art, art artisan kind of companies that were starting to grow that wanted to get out there. And there was like Rockstar and some other stuff too. But were you guys purposely grabbing these smaller companies that wanted to scale and then kind of putting them in, out there? And again, for an operator like myself, I don't have to buy, I didn't have to buy the drinks. We wanted somebody to be able to come into the house and have an experience with something, scan a QR code and then buy it. Was that your initial thought with like, with, with partnering or creating Showplace? Was that where it started? So V1, when we started, was connecting Airbnb hosts with companies who wanted to get their products out for sampling. We still have that business. We call it uh, free product samples. The idea there was that it allowed us to create this amazing network of hosts. We have over 15,000 short-term rental operators that we send you know, free products to. It's a great way to engage that community. And for us, it's a great way to get the brands and products out there. That's not our big focus today, but I think from where we started, 
it was a really good way to build a community and get people excited about those products. And from an Airbnb or an operator perspective, I mean, what better way to increase the guest experience than get some you know, free products for your guests? Yeah, I love that. In this video here, I'm going to go grab, because I used to plug you guys back in 2020. I'm going to go look for photos in my phone. I would get literally, I'm not kidding you guys, like half of my garage would be full of pallets of just stuff that we would take to our properties. Um, the ones that we had here centrally, and then we had properties in like Texas and other places. But I would just get this big bulk of stuff, the properties we had in California, and the, our, my garage would be half full, um, <laughs> just a, a product. And you know what, man? For me, just as you mentioned a minute ago, being able to place those in a property as a, a refreshment or um, something for a client to be able to use or a guest to use, that's a big deal. Like a lot of people don't think about that, but it really, really is. And I thought it was cool because you guys, I'm like a big fan of a small business owner. At that time, you guys were like, utilizing companies that were smaller. There weren't necessarily these big, giant global companies, which I think some stuff was, but a lot of it was more of like the artisan, smaller company trying to just get out, get their name out there. So I felt like you guys were really kind of targeting those smaller companies that were, you know, emerging or wanting to grow and to get more product. So, um, which is great, but I'm going to leave this in another spot real quick. During 2020, there's two things that happened. People either went out of business or their businesses thrived. It was, it was that year, 2020 to 2022 was like make it or break it for a lot of businesses. I could tell you right now for my business, if I didn't have, um, that first year when COVID hit, people weren't staying at properties. My calendar got slammed. If I didn't have midterm rentals to fall back on during that time, Justin, I would have been screwed royally, but luckily I was already doing midterm rentals, so I had that ability. A lot of people got really hammered during that first, you know, little period um, when COVID hit. A lot of businesses, friends' businesses that I have, restaurants that I loved, shut down. What happened during that time with you guys where you decided to shift into more of the design aspect? That you guys decided to kind of pivot because, again, I know that a lot of businesses were just hammered, right? A lot of people res uh, resigned from 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 jobs that people got let go. I mean, like, what did you guys do and pivot during that time? We talked to our customers and we had thousands of hosts. And the number one thing for the people who were thriving was how do I grow my portfolio? And as we looked into the model of what are hosts doing to grow their portfolio, it was basically saying, hey, I don't want to set up the entire property. It's a massive undertaking. You have... 20 different vendors you have to buy products from. You have to ship things from all over the country to one place. You have to do consolidated delivery and installation all without a cohesive design. It was a massive problem we kept hearing over and over again. My instincts as an entrepreneur is to say, well, let's pull that thread. Let's see if we can create a really amazing experience to help owners grow their portfolios, their property rental businesses. And that's really where we took a big turn and we said, hey, Let's move away from product sampling into let's help people design, furnish, and set up their properties for success. And that's really around that late 2020 mark. And we just were helping people all over the country. We actually did uh, 450 homes in the last 18 months to help entrepreneurs launch their property rental businesses. And we happen to believe that if you do it in the right way, where you're fully prepared, you're earning more money, better nightly rates better nightly rentals and reviews. And we're, we're really excited about helping entrepreneurs set up their properties. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight something you just said right now, which I don't hear very many people say often. And I'm glad you brought this up. When you own anything, you're an entrepreneur. When you're getting into the Airbnb space, you're an entrepreneur. And I think that it's one of those things, I call it a gateway drug. It's one of those things where, not like we're going to go out and smoke crack or anything, all right, Justin? <laughs> but what I mean by a gateway drug is it, it introduces the average everyday person that didn't have a business idea or mindset to now operating an actual business. And I think that um, it's so important. I'm a big advocate of, of those, uh, you know, kind of gateway drugs because eventually it'll evolve into something later on in life. It's, it'll start as this one thing, just like Showplace did, and it'll eventually um, evolve and become something different, change with the times. But it's that first little kind of dose of, I'm a, I'm a business owner. In reality, anybody that owns an Airbnb, granted we are um, listing on Brian Chesky's platform, which eventually we're, I look at Airbnb as like we're kind of their we're, we're kind of his employee in this weird way because we don't actually own what's on there other than the the property itself. But that's why I'm such a big advocate for the midterm space because we're business owners. Like we're the way that I do things, we go after companies, we create relationships. We're actually building a longevity. A long, a lo we're building longevity with a long roadway to build an actual business where we're not necessarily relying on Airbnb. So. First off, I want to give you credit for talking like that. You're, you're definitely an entrepreneur at heart by saying that. 
And yes, even if you do have an Airbnb, you're an entrepreneur and you're on that gateway drug where you'll eventually have something else later on. Would you agree to that, Justin? Yeah, what I love and the way I look at the business is that midterm rentals are two businesses. You're actually an entrepreneur, both in the real estate space. Hey, I've got to find the right piece of real estate. It has to pencil out. It has to make sense. And now you're just a real estate investor. But then you have the added layer of hospitality. Anything with that hospitality business is a whole different skill set. And you have to be able to think about what's the experience for my corporate rentals or my midterm rentals? What's the experience for my short-term rental guests coming here? And put your yourself in their shoes. And one of the things I look at when we design and furnish hundreds of short-term and midterm rentals is that they're two actually different skill sets. So in other words, if I'm furnishing a short-term rental, we know the guest is going to spend 80% of their time inside that property. So you have to think about all the amenities and all the things. It's actually a lot more expensive to do short-term rental versus if I'm going to do a midterm rental, 80% of the time, I'm going to work. I'm outside of that midterm rental. And so you probably can get away with a lot less as far as furnishing costs and amenities. And so we think about it slightly different, but it's all relating back to the entrepreneur starting a property investment business and a hospitality business. Yeah, I love I love that mindset. And we're gonna we'll get into the design uh, stuff here in a minute, but I think there's there's a whole movement that's evolved in the short term rental space where you know, when I started in 2015 with short-term rentals, it was, you can have four walls, a window and a TV and kill. Like nowadays you have to have murals. You got to have freaking pickleball courts. You got to have like all these things where it's like, not only you have to outfit a house, but now you have to do these ancillary things that have, uh, you know, I, I even see cold plunges and like all these things with these properties. Now it's like, everybody's trying to outdo each other with the murals or how many pickleball courts there are. And it's just like, dude, the midterm space is not like that. It's like, you're, you're right. People are living in these properties. They're re- usually on assignment. They're working. And you don't need to have murals everywhere. In fact, you don't even necessarily need to have wallpaper everywhere because people are typically living in these spaces. And I'm going to bring this up for a second because I, I had a conversation about this. I put wallpapers in my, in my properties. But I was talking to a bunch of clients and I actually had a client that was an insurance claim that we got. And this is where, for, for those of you who don't know, like a family can lose their home in a fire or a flood or you know, have a water leak or something and they have to have their house replaced. And while their house is being replaced, they're moved to one of my properties. I work with those insurance companies. And I had a woman that came through. She had a family of three and uh, it was her and her husband and a 15 year old. And I had a wall that had a mural on it, like a, not a mural, but like busy wallpaper. And she came through and she's like, oh, I like this house, but you need to take that wallpaper down. And I realized I was like, I like this wallpaper's waves. I thought it was cool because I use the place as a short term, midterm. I started to realize that you don't necessarily need to have these crazy funky designs like that in a house because most people are living there, like they're actually living there. And, and most people don't actually have wallpaper in their homes unless, unless you got some design, like you're good at design, you probably do. But again, I'm a big fan of wallpaper, but there's a different type of client that you have to have. And I think that, you know, you could probably relate to this more because you guys are doing so much of that. So are you seeing that right now? You know, as far as that goes, Justin? I call this concept the amenities arms race. So what what used to work on Airbnb in 2014, which was an air mattress and a pillow, and you get 200 bucks a night, doesn't work anymore. And being able to keep up, well, hey, if all my competition have hot tubs, now I got to buy a $3,000 hot tub. If all my competition has a, a gym and parking and bocce ball court and all these other things, now that's what you have to do to compete. And I think to work for Brian Chesky is an interesting concept because in a way he got us all to continue to increase the guest experience and that's been the goal. So it's great for guests and I, and I don't doubt that, but you're also running a business. All these things are investments and so we help a lot of clients think through, should I spend $3,000 on a hot tub or should I spend more money on the first, what we call the first five photo principle? We like to spend most of the budget on what the first five photos of your listing are going to appear on the website. So that's where we would rather put those dollars towards. I like that. Let's, let's talk about that for a minute. So, cause those first five photos, um, are important. Um, as you're swiping, you know, you're swiping, you're kind of, you're seeing yourself in that particular position. That's how I usually tell people is like those first five photos. If you don't tell a story within those first five photos where somebody can look at that and imagine themselves being in that chair, seeing that view, you know, being in that space, being in that cozy environment, like what is the five important things for you guys, Justin, as, as people are listening to this, both on the short-term side and we'll, we'll bring relevance to the midterm side, what you're seeing 
by hosting these or you know helping people in the design sp- space? Yeah, I think, well, it applies both to mid and short term rental. The idea for us is that guests make their decision 80% of the time with the first five photos. So if you have a budget and you're furnishing a midterm rental or a short term rental, you want to spend your budget on what you believe those first five photos are going to be. Oftentimes it's going to be the living room, an outdoor space that maybe is like the, the deck or the view of the property. So that's where we would tend to spend more money up front. And from our perspective, those five things generally you can identify up front. Like you, you know, um, hey, if this is an amazing view property or if this is an amazing living room or amazing kitchen, then that's kind of how we would assess that going forward. That, that, that to me is the better place to start. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, yeah, I just, I feel like sometimes, um, you know, like accessories or those other, you know, kind of things that people don't necessarily need in midterm rentals. They don't need to be there. Short term, I think, the more stuff you have in there, the more things you have, like it's probably going to be better than midterm space. Like I really don't think you need all the extra stuff. And it would be cool is like a Peloton bike or maybe a little gym set or a couple of yoga mats. Like those are the things that people are actually really going to care about and use. Would you agree to that, Justin, when we're talking about amenities for, for a midterm rental? Absolutely. The functional things that day to day you're going to use. The, the bocce ball court is not that useful if you're going to be there for two months. From our perspective, those types of investments should be considered. Um, we also help a lot of folks who are starting in their journey. So if you're just starting out, you don't have the funds to invest in all those amenities. That's why I personally love midterm rentals. Um, on the sliding scale, I've been an, an investor in long-term rentals. I've been an investor in midterm and short-term. Uh, and I think midterm to me checks all the boxes for a few reasons. Number one is you don't have to hassle with 10 to 12 guests every single month. That is an absolute nightmare. You have to train 10 to 12 people on how to open the front door. That's crazy in short-term rentals. With midterm, you do it once every few months. And then on the property management side, there's so much less wear and tear. So from a furnishing perspective, those products are going to last you just so much longer than a midterm rental. Yeah, you know what's crazy about that? I want to bring this up real quick because I have both short and mid. The difference between the wear and tear on a midterm and a short term is drastically different. Like people are throwing their luggage around. They're, you just brought up 10 to 12 different people. They're literally bringing their stuff in. I have stairs on some of my properties. You can see where the luggage is like boom, 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 boom. The walls are all screwed up. And then you go look at a midterm rental after three months after somebody's you know, vacated the home and you don't have that wear and tear. You don't have those spots that are on the walls. You don't have the, you know, the, the common wear and tear. Obviously, somebody's living in the home. But most of the time, and we'll, we'll, let's talk about the avatars of the types of clients that we serve on the midterm side as opposed to the short-term side. People are in and out. They treat the house more like crap when they're, when they're let's just be honest. Like, I've been in short-term rentals. I'm lugging my, st- I'm dragging my stuff around too. When I'm in a midterm rental, and Justin, you can, you could probably attest to this. Midterm rental guests, they have a different mindset. They almost treat the house exactly like as if they were living, they are living it, like, like it's their home. And I don't know if there's just a different mindset that comes along with people in there. Um, but I've even had guests that will like send me a note and just say, Hey, I couldn't find a uh, wall plug in a certain spot. So I ended up buying an extension cord I actually put in there. Is that cool? Like they're actually going out of their way to do something or Hey, one of the bath bathroom lights just burnt out. I just went and bought one. I ordered one on Amazon. I would never have a short term rental guest do that. In fact, I would have 20 messages saying why am they going to give you a bad review because a light went out in the kitchen and they didn't have a place to plug their phone in. So just the guests are so different, right? Justin, would you agree to that? hundred percent. The guest avatar for people who are staying there for the weekend to party versus someone staying for two months because they've had a traumatic event in their life. It just feels different. And I think there's a certain level of appreciation on midterm rentals um, that comes with that. I, let me just say one thing too, Jesse, like I, at, at Pillow, we managed over 40,000 short-term rental reservations. I was scarred uh, in many ways, and we've seen absolutely everything that you can see in short-term. Now, the, the methodology I like to, to use when managing a, a midterm or short-term rental, res, uh, a short-term or midterm rental reservation is that it's very much like flying an airplane. Okay, so hear me out. You have to make sure that the takeoff, the check-in, has to work super well. Like when that person comes in, is everything absolutely the way they expected it? It, it, You have to make sure that they can get into the property. And when you're doing that and the takeoff works really well, the rest of that flight can be on autopilot. And then the other thing you have to do is make sure that when they're finishing their reservation, 
That's another manual. Is the checkout experience good? At Pillow, we focused a lot of time on getting the check-in right and the checkout right. Everything else in the middle is on autopilot, and I think that that mental model helped us really deliver much better guest experiences. Yeah, I love that. You know what? Speaking of Pillow, did you you have founded that? I was a co-founder at Pillow in 2013. Yes. 2013. Did you guys exit out of that with a pretty good sale? Yeah, so uh, Expedia, who owns VRBO, they were competing with Airbnb and still compete with Airbnb for urban inventory. And so we had a lot of urban inventory that was really interesting to them in a platform. And so they made us an offer we couldn't refuse. Yeah, you're not able to tell us that offer, are you? Let's just say that between Expedia and Airbnb, we got into a bidding war. Yeah. And so the valuation was much higher than it should have been on its own. More than 10 million, less than 10 million. Much more. That's freaking awesome, man. Yeah, I, I love stories like that, like founder stories where just like we came in at the right time. 2013, not a lot of people were thinking about um, vacation rental areas. They weren't thinking about necessarily creating those things. I, I mean, I think it was like a really a niche thing at that point. Airbnb really didn't take off yet until I didn't really learn about Airbnb until 2014. And I just barely heard about it. And I happened to be um, I don't even remember exactly where I learned about it. I actually, I, my family and I stayed in Airbnb and it was in San Diego at the time. Um, but not, not many people were doing it, but there was all these independent little owners, usually like in, you know, coastal areas, you'll have property managers that have all these things. So you guys did things like on scale, it sounds like at Pillow. Yeah. I mean, we, we learned how to do it and we, what I call, we built Guesty before Guesty. So before Guesty existed, we had to build everything ourselves. Now what's amazing is to go into midterm and short term. There's so many more tools available than there were a decade ago. I'm really jealous. Like we had to build our own pricing algorithm, our own cl uh, cleaning app for our cleaners and like all of these th owner experience. And so, yeah, now if you want to start a midterm rental, like I'm jealous. There's so many tools <laughs> out there to help you. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm going to dive into customer avatars here in a minute, but I'm, I'm fascinated by founder stories. So I, I want to talk about this a little bit more. When you started Pillow, was it was the thought process to be this big giant company? Was it was it really about growing and scaling or did, was it just like we're going to start in our backyard? We're going to keep this simple. You know, what was the thought process behind that? We wanted to swing for the fences, man. We got Great. when you when you get in the ring. You want to go as far as you can. And so yeah. we, we started with this idea of like, hey, we knew that vacation rental was going to be a growing thing. And then over time, it became really clear that the preferences for guests have changed, right? Like, I don't want to stay in a hotel as a millennial. I want to stay in a short-term rental. I want to stay for a long period of time in a midterm rental. I mean, and those trends, I think, are generational, like, I, I don't see people going back to hotels. I, I see people staying in midterm and short-term rentals as a long-term trend. And from our perspective, we happened to get in at a really good time that was early, and we rode that wave all, all that way. Yeah, up. yep, yeah. So you believe timing is everything, Justin, I think, right? I think, I think timing is a lot. I also believe you got to stay in the game long enough to get hit by the lucky bus. If you don't stay in the game long enough, a lot of people quit. They give up when it gets hard. Anything, midterm rentals, long term, like it's just it's hard, right? You're going to encounter problems. the 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 name of the game, in my opinion, is how well do you want to solve problems? And if you can solve them for a marathon duration of time, I think you're going to do well. And that's frankly just Jesse. The one thing. Look at this goosebumps right now. You see that? I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Jesse. So after we sold Pillow, I had a dream of owning real estate. And since 2018, I bought a lot of it. And it has absolutely changed my life to be an a owner of real estate, to generate passive income, long-term, short-term, mid-term rentals. And it's changed the whole trajectory of my family and my whole life. I, I, I think there's no better way than real estate to generate generational wealth. Like it's an amazing asset class. And that's why I feel fortunate getting to wake up every day and help other people like you launch rental businesses. It's hard. And it's intimidating when you look at a midterm rental or short term rental like it's a it's so much money. There's so many bars you have to clear. It's a high bar to even get into the game that like I'm excited for what you're offering because it helps make it accessible for people. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to I want to hit on something you said earlier. I think most people are looking for that instant gratification. They're looking to launch a property, get it going from day one, make tons of money from day one. 
but the reality is any business, like it takes time to, to build stuff and you're going to have these super difficult moments that come across, but you have to be willing to weather the storm. Cause again, real estate is a long term. You just said it, it's generational. It's, it's not a get rich quick overnight kind of thing. It is literally takes years for you to build something. And one thing I want to make sure I hit on is that most businesses aren't even profitable until three to five years. Like, so they're operating for three years without revenue. We live in a time where we can literally take pictures from our iPhone 14s, post them online and make money from them right away, um, which is great. But again, we need to make sure that anybody that's coming into the space has that longevity, that long, that big picture that we're, first off, we're lucky to be able to even do that. You're a business owner, you know, it takes time to build stuff. And second off, weathering storms, you just mentioned a minute ago, like we have to be able to delay gratification for a longer duration of time to be successful literally in any business. And I think that we can have that ambition and that drive and you'll, you'll get that when you start this. You'll feel it like, yes, I want to get going. I just connected with Showplace. I got my design going. You might have a month where you don't get booked. You might have a month and a half that you don't get booked. But that ability to make sure that you're planning ahead of time, that you're making sure that you're, you're covering your costs if you need to for whatever reason. And third, that you know the market, you know what you're, going, you're getting yourself into, you know what types of clients are there, what kind of avatars are in those markets. That's going to be super, super imperative for the growth of not only your business, but also your real estate portfolio. Because you're right, Justin, you said this earlier. It's two separate pieces of the pie. You have the real estate business, then you have the actual business itself, which is the hospitality aspect. And those are two separate things. And what I love the most about this is that exactly what you did, I can create a portfolio and I can eventually sell my real estate. And guess what else I could sell? This business that I've created that is either a, a co-hosted properties that I own, um, the relationships that I've built with like insurance companies, you know, nursing, healthing companies, construction companies, those are all business. Those are all business, business relationships. Those are, those can be sold. What's your thoughts on that, Justin? No, I, I think every aspect of real estate to me is exciting. What I think about is the spectrum. You have traditional long-term rentals, which I believe was the best, one of the best inventions in the last hundred years. Think about a long-term rental. You buy a place, you get a tenant, they bring all their stuff. If you have all your stuff in a property, you're not leaving pretty easily. Like it's a lot of work, and that, but you're not going to make very much money doing that. So I like midterm because you don't have to fool around with too many guests, but you're going to make more money than you are on long term. And then exposure to short term. That's the fur in my mind, the furthest out on the innovation curve is the short term rentals. It's the highest return that you're going to get. But you got to fool around with it's a lot of hassle factor on short term rentals. So to me, I like to have exposure to all three. That's why my portfolio has all three and none of that is a short term, like flash in the pan deal. Like this is, Hey, I want to own these pieces of real estate for 30 years. Being a a long-term mindset helps me make that investment. And when we talk to clients in our space, we help them understand like, Hey, if you want to do midterm rentals or short-term rentals for 12 months, you're actually not a good customer of ours. You're much better renting furniture. You should go to court and rent furniture. If you want to do this long-term and it's a three to five year deal, then you're much better off buying furniture. And we have to have those conversations sometimes with folks. Yeah, I'm, I'm 100% with you on that. Um, I think it's, you know, it's important to know what, it's important for the, the clients to know exactly what they're getting into. So let's dive into this now, because I know that I want to make sure that we give value to the folks that are listening. Today's been awesome. I'm super stoked that you've, I really have enjoyed this conversation so far, Justin. I'm sure everybody else that's watching this right now is like, man, this is, this is awesome. So thanks for being here. I, I knew this was going to be good. Um, let's talk about avatars right now, because in the midterm rental space, there is so many different avatars and I hate that word avatar. Uh, I don't know why I just don't like it, but <laughs> I think, I don't know what it is like a customer avatar clients, guests, whatever you want to call them. Okay. And what I'm saying is that on the short term rental side, typically when I'm putting together a property, I will focus on like say families, or we're going to focus on, um, you know, like I have a place in Lodi that's really cool. It's big. It's a it's a place for like bridal showers. It's a place for, I have my, that's my avatar, right? It's already specific towards that. In the midterm or medium term space, however you want to call it, corporate housing space, there's not really one specific avatar. What we're wanting to do is have the potential to have a family that has been relocated. So, right, we're going to use insurance relocation for one. Travel nursing, like one of my favorite clients to have are travel nurses and not just necessarily them directly, but the companies that are housing them. I like to work with them directly. So I have those how, those folks. I have Construction companies. Another one of my favorite is to have these guys that are working at a job site and they're on assignment for three months, whatever, however long that job is. 
they're staying at a Holiday Inn Express, they're staying at somewhere random. All they wanna do is have a place to go crash out and what we're trying to do is save that company money. So there's different avatars, right, in the space. Business travelers that are coming through, they wanna have fast Wi-Fi, they wanna have comfortable beds, a nice couch, a workstation. Let's break down what types of um, amenities we're gonna to wanna to have for those specific types of clients. So Justin, like real quick on like travel nurses, what would you guys recommend for the folks listening right now, if they're working with you guys, what they can have in their homes to yes. accommodate those folks? Exactly. So when we're thinking about midterm rentals in the travel nursing avatar, we're going to make recommendations around comfort. We know, hey, when this is a place that you come after a 12 hour shift, you want to, you want to be comfortable. So we're going to invest, for example, in probably higher end couches, beds, mattresses, the things that are going to get used absolutely every single time. The other one is blackout curtains. We're going to make a recommendation that, hey, these people are working you know, maybe midnight shifts all night and they're going to come home and it's light out. So you want to have a blackout curtain and something that like helps them actually be functional uh, in their day to day. The other thing is we're probably going to invest less on fun amenities like we talked about. We're not going to do an air hockey table that I might do in a short term rental. I'm not going to do a pool table, things like that. Um, the other one is closet space. I would recommend that for someone staying for, you know, two to three months that we have absolutely the high quality hangers. We have a big closet space that's totally available for their clothes and making sure in a short term rental, you don't really need those types of things. So in that spirit, I would just generally say that more functional, um, less focus, less on the fun and more on actually like day to day living there. Yeah, I love that. Another thing that I'd recommend, and this might sound silly, but I can't tell you how many times I've had people reach out to the about about this, a box fan or a noise machine. Like people are super particular about the way they sleep. I know I am. I have to sleep with the, like the sound of a, a fan from my bathroom. It's right next to me right here. Like that, that, I just have to sleep with that sound. If I go somewhere else to say, I want to have that box fans. Like I love the way that sounds that low. You can buy a pretty cheap and you guys probably, I think you guys actually have these Justin at Showplace. Um, the little, like little devices that you guys will sell. Cause I've had clients. Some of my students have actually worked with you guys and they'll get the little noise machines and things like that for nurses. I heard Jesse, I heard a great hack. That maybe that maybe this resonates with your with you and your audience. Let's say that I have a property, and the order of operations in my mind would be: I'm going to have my property, I'm going to furnish it, and then I'm going to list it on Furnish Finder. The hack is the inverse. Think about this. A lot of people do this. I have a property unfurnished. I'm going to list it on Furnish Finder, and then once I secure my first tenant, now I'm going to go and invest in the furniture. I'm curious what you think about that. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually had students that have done that before. Again, going back to what I've talked about before, I'm big on outreach, outbound calls. We're creating our own business. So um, yeah, you can actually get a client before Justin, before you even have your house outfitted and put together. Now this becomes, you talked about an arms race earlier. This becomes an arms race to try to get your place filled in time. Say there's a client that's coming in two weeks and you get this juicy booking. That's where I would leverage you guys. And you guys do something really cool. And I'll, I, I want to make sure we cover the avatars before I get into this. But you guys were the first company that I heard do this, where you will send somebody, and this is perfect for people that are busy, uh, either entrepreneurs or just most people I would say work a W-2 job. Um, they're building in this aspect or they're building their midterm or short-term business to get out of that W-2 job. But say I'm buying something in Cincinnati, Ohio. You guys would actually send somebody there as the furniture is arriving. That person would be putting it in. They'd put, be putting the property together. I thought that was super cool, man, because it's such an, it's, it's, I can't tell you the logistics side of putting together those pieces and kudos to you guys for thinking like that far ahead. Not only that, but finding people that would go out and actually take care of that and do that. And it sounds like you guys have a pretty good amount of people. Do you want to talk about that for a minute before we jump into the rest of the avatars? Sure. Well, here's the problem. I got a couple weeks. I need to furnish my property. I got a tenant coming in. What do I do? If I have a property in Cincinnati and I live in California, it's not going to work. Number one thing people say, I'm going to buy everything and I'm going to ship it to the property. We have seen countless times where items get stolen off the porch. You have 200 items on average to furnish a home. It's crazy. Uh, things are going to get stolen, rained on, damaged. It's absolutely nightmare. You can't just send prop. You can't just send products directly to the property. So we offer a service. Uh, it's called consolidated delivery. We give you one address. You send all your items to one warehouse that's local to that property. We do, basically do inventory and make sure it's kitted. And on one day, all those items go on a box truck. We have a network there. Uh, our other network is our installation network. So we have the best and vetted vendors all around the country 
who once those items arrive, they start cranking and putting together all the products and furniture in your property. And that is an invaluable service. It's a very expensive service because it takes a lot of time. On average, we're talking about 150 man hours to set up a three bedroom home. And so 150 man hours, you have two options. You can take three weeks off of work and do backbreaking labor and set it all up yourself, which is which people do and they, they do it once and then they come to show place for their second property. That's me. I was like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> never doing it again. Or you can use someone in our network that is doing this and they come in with a crew of 10 people and they knock it out in like three days. And so there's a, you know, you have a lot of solutions and we have clients that are full service. We have clients that are DIY and we like to support everyone. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love that. And we'll get into the whole design stuff here in a minute. I want to make sure that we cover, um, we cover some of this, uh, you know, avatar stuff. So, okay, cool. Yeah, no, I love that. I, I remember when I first heard, uh, Rachel told me about that. I was just like, holy smokes, do you guys do that? And she's like, yeah, we'll actually send somebody out. They'll stay at the home. We'll get everything delivered at one time. Um, I've had properties that I put together or that we've had even other designers put together and just stuff's showing up randomly. There's nobody there at the house to, um, take the stuff in. I got just piles of stuff that's outside we ended up getting things stolen um so it's just it's a it's a pain man to to do that if you're not on site you know what i mean oh yeah and we there's another hack if you want to do it cheaper we call it a live-in installer so this is a brother a brother a cousin a friend this is a cheaper way to do it send them to the property for two weeks on an air mattress and then you can send all the products and they bring it in on a daily basis but there's no great solution yeah yeah, there's really not. Um, but you guys do something like that, right? You guys have somebody that will go stay in the home as you guys are putting it together? Or am I am I off on that? Um, we started with that model and we learned that it's not super sustainable. So right now we offer consolidated delivery as the best option for that. Got it. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, it'd be a tough, a tough thing to do. Um, I thought it was cool, but that's cool. As long as, as long as every, everybody, some, you know, the, the guests or the clients are able to get all their stuff at one moment, that's freaking awesome without having to be there either. And then you guys go in and do the rest. I think that's important. We, we have, we built a lot of technology around giving daily updates to the customer. So the one thing, if you live in California, your property's in Cincinnati, you're going to get an end of day report, which is a PDF. Here's all the checklist items that have happened on site. Here's the photos. And so you can see every single update that's happening as that property gets prepared and ready. Yeah, that's that's amazing, man. I, I, I love that. Okay, let's finish up avatars here for a second. So we talked about the travel nurses, what we, what we need. Let's talk about insurance relocation or temporary housing folks. So what would you say, Justin, that, that people would need in the house for those types of clients? Yeah, with personal experience, you know, when I was when I was younger, we had we had a, a, an insurance claim, and my parents and I we stayed at a property for three months as things got cleaned up. From personal experience, we're looking for every single amenity in the kitchen that you would expect at home: pots, pans, bakeware, all those essentials that you would expect. And do not skimp on those. Right, if someone's living there. Um, the other one is with the kitchenware: is that you should make sure you have enough supplies that will feed the total number of max guests in the property. So in other words, if you can sleep six people, you, ha you better make sure you have at least eight to 12 sets of plates and cups and things. Uh, we've had issues where people have less than ideal number of guest wear uh, in the kitchen. The other one um, for us, I think, goes back to having blackout curtains, right? I think it's just a must in today's world where people are expecting, hey, I don't wanna have distractions on noise or impairments on, on um, light in the property. Oftentimes what we recommend is that you stay at your property for one or two nights after you get it ready before your first guest, because you're gonna find the things that a future guest would potentially find. And so like, does is it functional? Are there outlets near the bed? For example, the other thing I'd recommend for insurance is uh, a lamp that has a USB plug. And that way people can plug their phones right into the USB lamp without having to move all the furniture around and find a plug. Little tri tips and tricks like that that I think make it really functional. The last thing I'll say is when it comes to the televisions and the entertainment, I would make sure that you have televisions that are easily accessible for folks that want to watch TV. If people are going to be living there for a long period of time, make sure that they're high quality and that they can log into their own streaming devices things like that. Yeah. We'd also obviously want to have like cushy 
couches. And I think this is where the biggest difference between the short term and the midterm space are. Um, and this is me included. Like I would buy a super awesome looking mid-century couch, but then I go sit on that and it feels like I'm sitting on a piece of wood. You don't want to have that in an insurance claim. Like you just don't want to have a family sitting on a piece of wood. Like you want to have something that obviously looks cool, but is also like super comf that has like that plushness to it that just you lay there. Like I, I think you have to make sure that you have something that's functional and not necessarily looks the greatest, but is more of like an actual piece that somebody can feel comfortable with. Would you agree to that, Justin? Oh, absolutely. I think comfort, right? The things that people are going to spend most of the time on, right? The couch, the bed, the mattress, the bed frame are huge places to invest. The other just interesting hack, Jesse, that I like to talk about, it goes back to the first five photos that you see on your listing. Oftentimes, the guest who's the primary booking person is going to be staying in the master bedroom. So what that means transitionally is that you want to invest in the master bedroom slightly more than in bedrooms two or bedrooms three because the people booking your property are looking to you know, rent your property are going to be staying in the master bedroom the vast majority of the time. Yeah, I love that. I never, really, I never really thought about that before. That's definitely for sure a hack, for sure, man. Thanks for bringing that up, Justin. Okay, and we're, we're going to shift over to a couple other avatars um, that I feel that are important in the midterm space. Business travelers, we already know, I think we already kind of know this. this. I think this will follow along with the same with the travel nurses blackout curtains, but I would say make sure you have super fast, crazy Wi-Fi, especially if it's like a, a digital nomad or somebody working remotely, right? something that's fast, even like a little office station, like you would have at like a Hilton or a Marriott or something like that. Right, Justin, would you agree to that? Yeah. I think you want to have, you know, a monitor that you can plug into and off a really good, comfortable chair if people are going to be working from there. And I think that avatar concept in the office space where there's not a lot of backlight, for example, or maybe there's a lot of forward light that you could have a ring light, which is an inexpensive option to kind of help people get comfortable. And then maybe even you provide a little external video camera. I've seen there's some high end midterm rentals that have a, a ridiculous uh, camera set up for people who are digital nomads. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's that's definitely a, a, a good concept. So again, you got to know your avatar. Um, and then I'll swing over to these last two avatars that I've seen. These are like folks that I've housed over the last year, um, construction workers or, you know, folks that are working engineers that are working on assignment. We get those a lot out of our places. And keep in mind, those folks are typically used to staying in, um, you know, uh, extended stay hotels. They're not there. And those are, if you guys have ever been one of those, they're like the most basic couch, a bed. So like with clients like that, Justin, what would you recommend for amenities, et cetera? I had a rental in uh, San Francisco that we did midterm with, and they were building the new uh, Chase uh, Stadium, the basketball stadium in San Francisco. And I had four guys who were there on assignment for six months, and they were the absolute best tenants. They, they went around my place. They were fixing light bulbs. They were improving the property for things that they needed. And so for them, it was really important to have really good parking, right? They're they're to and from. The last thing they want to worry about when they get to the property is parking. Um, and then also making sure that I think fast Wi-Fi is important when they get home, making sure they have comfortable beds. And, um, and the other one that we dealt with was space heaters. In certain markets, making sure that your guests are going to have the right AC or space heater, depending on if you have that in your property. Um, so things like that, I think, are important. Yeah. One more thing, too. You said parking pro tip. A lot of these workers are bringing work trucks with them or they have work trucks. So they have super expensive material in the back of their truck. If you don't have a garage space for them, um, that could be a deal breaker for a lot of these folks. Uh, even the extended stay, I remember I had a couple clients that stayed with me. They were actually building a Dave and Buster's in my market. I'm um, Justin. And these guys were like, um, they had multiple different trucks. There were two big trucks. Um, that property that they ended up staying at had a garage that parked in front. And then in the alleyway, there was a secondary garage where they could park. There were two work trucks that were big on, in both spaces, but that was a juicy $10,000 a month booking. And the reason why I even got that booking was because I saw that there, I drove by this new Dave and Buster's. I saw that there were, there was plates from Louisiana that were on this work truck. I got home like a crazy maniac. I took a picture of the truck. I called the company the next day and I was like, Hey, I saw that there's a work truck out there. Um, I know this might sound weird, but I house folks that work in corporate industries, just like the folks that are working at the Dave and Buster's. Can you tell me a little bit about where you guys are staying right now? They happened to be staying at a Holiday Inn, which was right around the corner for me. It was one seventy nine a night for each guy to stay in their own place. There was five dudes. So you do the math on that. We, we rounded up with, with taxes. That's $200 a night for five guys, right? 
So that's $1,000 a day times 30 days. Wow. That's $30,000. So we ended up renting a five-bedroom house to them for 10 k a month. Wow. They had parking. And what was the goal there? Was, you, you brought this up earlier. How are we able to solve problems? What are we able to do for a smaller company? And guess what? That company ended up saving literally $60,000 by staying in one of our properties rather than staying at the Holiday Inn Express. That's what an entrepreneur does. Like They think about how do I solve the problems? How do I create an opportunity for myself? How do I have somebody be comfortable, even more comfortable than they'd be staying at a Holiday Inn Express? And how can I create longevity with this relationship, this company that I'm working with now? And guess what? Anytime they're going to do these new things, they'll call me or they'll send me an email and say, hey, we're going to be going to Louisiana. We're going to have a job assignment here. Do you have any property that is available for us there? And guess what I could do? Go to my network, go to my space and say, hey, guys, I'm working with a company here. Uh, they need to have a, a five bedroom house. Who's got that? And we'll get a bo- booking. And guess what they'll do? They'll give me a referral fee. That might be 10 percent of the property value of, of the rental that they get. So about thirty thousand dollars. I'm getting a per- pretty nice little chunk of change by literally just referring somebody to another person. So, again, like this is ways to build a successful business. And we're doing things unconventionally. We're doing things that are not what most people are willing to do, which is put in the work, be a creeper and go drive by and take a picture of a work truck. We all have this happening in our backyard. But again, that's why I I love these kinds of podcasts or these types of um, conversations, because people get a glimpse of like, I can probably do that. And I see that happening now, but I just never thought about it. Justin, I think I saw you laughing. You're probably just like, man, what a what a great idea. Oh, it's amazing. And there's that's what's so amazing about real estate. There's endless opportunities to help people as long as you can put yourself out there. I have a, a rental in Los Angeles and we do transitional housing. And it's an operator who's helping people get back on their feet. You know, maybe they've been incarcerated or maybe that, you know, they're coming off the street homeless and they help people with programs and food and they're using the property to help people get on their feet and we're helping people. Like it's a, it's it's I think what's amazing about real estate is you have the opportunity to help folks who are literally in their day-to-day lives in a way that is really hard to do. And it feels good. It, it's, it feels philanthropic at the end of the day. If you're a little creative, you know, to do things like that, it's cool. Yeah. I, I can tell you this, like I, real estate, ha- I was talking about this earlier. On, I had another call earlier. We were talking about this. I didn't realize how many people don't like landlords that are out there in the world right now. There's a lot of people that just like hate landlords and even hate you even more if you have an Airbnb or a midterm rental. But I I like to bring this up to people that when we're doing things by going after these companies or helping families that have been that lost their home or travel nurses, we're not necessarily taking property away from people that could rent. But what we're doing is we're helping our community in a different way. And I think for me, coming from a mindset of like, I always wanted to make money. I always wanted to do this. Like when I felt that for the first time where I felt like I'm actually improving somebody's life in a certain way, that I'm housing somebody that lost something. And some of these people that lose their home in a fire, like lose family members, pets, like it's a crazy thing. And when you actually sit down and hear somebody's story, it will change the way you look at your business. And it did for me. And I think that's what really opened the door up that I'm not only just, you know, able to make a little bit extra cash, but I'm also serving these families and these communities that that I live in, that we thrive in. Um, And it's such a big difference. There's a vast difference between being like a slumlord, right? And then actually serving a community and a family. It's its just such a different uh, mindset. And that's one of the things that I truly, truly love about, you know, you're right. There's so many different avenues in real estate. Um, and what's worked in the past, Justin, isn't going to work in the future. We have interest rates that are high right now. We have to be thinking different. And I think that's where you're going to see these um, savvy investors that are coming in, adapting these principles that are going to the summit, that are using you guys for um, design services and whatnot. And thinking ahead and creating an actual legitimate business that's going to give them a long roadway to build stuff. Because again, what's worked in the past isn't necessarily going to work in the future. And we're seeing that now. Yeah, we we 100% agree with that. And we think that if you can be a little entrepreneurial, put yourself out there, you can not only just help people, but create an engine for yourself that can be just absolutely life-changing. I know personally my journey had been how many rental properties do I need? to replace my W-2 job. That was my first goal. And then once I hit that goal, like relatively quickly, I was so surprised I could get there. Well, then it's like the sky is the limit. You've bought back your freedom, right? You've bought back that notion. And so having a diversified portfolio into midterm rentals and short-term and long-term, to me, strikes the right balance between risk and reward. I think you kind of want to assess like, hey, I don't want to have all short-term rentals. I don't want to have all long-term rentals. I want to have a mix. So I have a nice balance. Um, And then the other like personal journey that I've been on was how do I do it with a lot less leverage? Real estate is expensive. And what I found 
is that the, the, the real estate that I own that does not have any mortgages or very little leverage, they cash flow like crazy. Like it's, I, I would just, I would just say this real estate is a lot more fun when you get the cash flow. If you're, <laughs> if you're breaking even month to month, real estate's not that fun. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. And it, and it can be scary uh, to be in that position too. Where you're just like on reserves and yeah, it's, it's not fun if you're not cash flowing, but again, there's ways to cash flow. Um, and yeah, it might not be just listing on Airbnb and VRBO and Furnish Finder. Um, but I do think there's ways to grow. And again, it's by doing things a little bit different, putting a little bit more sweat equity and building your actual business. Um, and not just being an employee of Brian Chesky by listing on Airbnb, right? Um, so Justin, I'm super excited. I use Showplace. I'm super excited that you guys are part of the summit, that you guys uh, took that leap in, in the sponsorship. I do believe that um, you guys have tremendous value. I even use you guys myself. I refer to you guys to clients. So anybody watching this right now, I'm going to leave a link down below. Make sure you guys hit up Showplace and Justin um, for all of your design needs and even more. You guys do even more than that. So um, check them out. Justin, do you have any parting words or any final thoughts on, uh, I'm still I'm still thinking like, man, how much money did Justin make during that sale of freaking pillow? Like <laughs> that's where my brain's at right now. I'm going to tell you in person when I see you next month. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait, man. I'm excited about that. Where can yeah. folks find you, Justin? Yeah, people can find us at Showplace, showplacehq.com. Um, you can email me at justin at showplacehq and I'll answer your email. I'm all about helping people on their entrepreneurial journey with real estate. Uh, I hope it can change your life in the same way that it's been able to have such a positive impact in my own life. Yeah, I love that, man. And we'll leave everything down below. I'm super stoked for you guys and your journey and your business. Um, you seem like a, a credible dude that's been able to sell pillow for billions of dollars, which we're going to hear about at the summit next year. Well, I, I mean, next year and like literally, what is it? Four weeks from now. So I'm just pumped, man. I'm, I'm super excited for you. And I really love what you guys have going on over at Showplace. And I encourage everybody to click the link. If you guys are getting ready to list your property, if you're, if it's a future plan, reach out to them, connect. They're definitely somebody that you want to work with. And I vouch for a hundred percent. So Justin, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much.